Why you must not fall asleep in war. Nothing is more closely intertwined with war than extreme sleep deprivation, which can have major performance and morale-sapping effects on the rank and file. It's pretty hard to remain enthusiastic on a campaign where your eyelids feel like lead blocks. You can get yourself and your buddies killed. It's a truth about as old as war itself. The slumberous sentry caught unawares not only gravely endangers himself, but everyone around him. In the First World War, lethargic Germans on the front line often learnt this the hard way, when their beauty sleep was abruptly disrupted by either a thwack to the head, a stab to the chest, or a grenade to the face. In the dead of night, the British regularly carried out trench raids on their opposing number. This involved crawling under German wire in the pitch black, and noiselessly dispatching any heavy-lidded watchman with a rifle butt or a club. Once disabled, the raiders made their way around, announcing themselves by tossing grenades and finishing off any survivors with rifle charges. Hitting the sack in World War II was fraught with the same danger. Eugene Sledge of the Pacific fame relates how one night Japanese ambushers rushed toward their camp out of nowhere. In the ensuing chaos, the intruders were slain. In the darkness, a lone groan sounded, and someone was sent to end it with a pistol shot to the temple. However, to his horror, when morning came, Sledge realized the moaning man had been one of his own comrades, Bill. Bill had been accidentally executed by one of his own, because his foxhole buddy Sam, who was meant to be on watch, had hit the hay and was unaware that his partner was out of the hole and gravely injured. It was the ultimate betrayal. You can get executed. For millennia, drowsy delinquents have been handed severe punishments, designed to dissuade others to think twice about nodding off. As such, these reprimands aren't usually meant to teach the offender a lesson. Why? because they're usually not alive by the end. One of the first to mete out this sort of justice was the ancient Greek general Iphicrates, who famously stabbed to death a sleeping sentinel on the spot with a spear. I left him as I found him, he cruelly proclaimed afterwards to his horrified men. The Romans were equally brutal, preferring blunt force to the clean, sharp jabs of the spear. According to Polybius, if a soldier was discovered napping on post, he was beaten to a pulp with cudgels and stones by his colleagues in arms. There was nothing like the sight of your comrades' flying brains to persuade you to stay wide awake. During World War I, snoozing at the wrong time could also spell your doom. At the Battle of Gallipoli in 1915, three soldiers from Australia were court-martialed and condemned to death for the crime. Luckily for them, this was later reduced to the more attractive prospect of five years in jail. In fact, it was common practice during the Great War to commute death penalties in favor of softer punishments. One of the most popular of these, known as Field Punishment No. 1, involved the strapping of the weary wrongdoer to a fixed object like a wagon for up to two hours a day over a period as long as three months. These mortified miscreants were often left to contemplate their own mortality, because they were sometimes placed within range of enemy shellfire. Others were spread-eagled and tied to wheels in public and forced to endure the jeers of the local people. In the modern U.S. military, the maximum possible punishment for dozing off is a lot less humiliating but still ruinous, with regular personnel given a dishonorable discharge, forced to forfeit their pay and imprisoned for up to a year. However, according to Article 95 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, in times of war, those caught catnapping on the job can still be executed even today. You can get captured. During times of conflict, one of the most effective ways to capture an enemy combatant is not by forcing their surrender, but by taking them when they're at their most defenseless. This is exactly what happened during the capture of Fort Ticonderoga, the first American offensive in the Revolutionary War of Independence against the British. Located in the state of New York in 1775, the American forces planned to take the British fort to control the ships coming down from the nearby river. Under the command of Ethan Allen and Benedict Arnold and the cover of night, the American renegades walked through the open gate where they stumbled upon a snoring British lookout. Switching from one sort of unconsciousness to another, he was rudely awoken with a bash to the head. 
The men then climbed the stairs, where they found all 83 British troops tucked up and fast asleep. A splinter group went to capture the British leader, Captain Delaplace, who, roused from his bed, awoke to find himself in an actual nightmare. You can get killed by your own men. Out of harm's way and surrounded by resting buddies, you'd think one of the safest places to nod off was in a military base. However, for many senior officers serving in Vietnam, this seemingly secure bastion had enemies around every bunk. Towards the end of the U.S.-Vietnam War, morale among free world forces was at an all-time low due to the prevailing belief that the conflict was not only unjust, but impossible to win. Terrified and angry that a bad commander might send them to their deaths with a boneheaded tactical gambit, servicemen began taking their fate into their own hands. Fragging during the U.S.-Vietnam War was the act of tossing a live fragmentation grenade into the tents or quarters of a despised senior officer. It was the perfect crime, because the destruction of the grenade shell would ensure that any fingerprints were also eviscerated alongside the victim. This murderous phenomenon was exacerbated by the drug-addled minds of some of the perpetrators, who fried their brains with a cornucopia of illicit drugs to get them through their deployment. Handing out disciplinary charges could be viewed as justifiable reason to reduce a senior officer to fundamental units of matter. Overall, a total of over 800 fragging incidents were reported in the U.S. Army and Marines alone, making the U.S.-Vietnam War one of the major campaigns in which the old proverb, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, should be taken literally. You can lose an entire war. Every blunder mentioned here pales in comparison to the one committed by Adolf Hitler himself, who had slept at one of the most critical junctures of World War II, scuppering the Aryan dream with his own dreams. On June 6, 1944, the Allies crossed the English Channel by boat and plane, the final destination being Berlin. In the early stages, the assaulters feigned to gain a solid foothold in the Cherbourg Harbor area, with the Allies temporarily set back, this was the perfect time for the Germans to press home their advantage. A formidable brigade of reinforcements were waiting on the sidelines, and there was now a real opportunity to crush the invasion before it really got going. Far away from the front lines in Bechtesgaden, Germany, a phone began ringing in the low rooms of Berghof, Hitler's headquarters at the time. The caller was Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, who was worried that unless something was done, that enemy forces would turn from a trickle into a flood. What the Germans needed now was the permission of the ultimate authority to change tactics. But when Hitler's attendants went to find him, they discovered the Fuhrer was out like a light. Terrified at the consequences of suddenly waking him up and giving him false intelligence, the assistants rather left him be. When he was stirred from his bed, Hitler approved a transfer of tank divisions to Khan that had been requested 12 hours earlier, but by then it was too late. The Allies had recovered too strongly, and D-Day, a significant turning point in World War II, was now theirs. So, whether you're a lowly private or the commander-in-chief, don't you dare fall asleep, because you'll either wish you were dead, or you'll actually be dead.